the Saudi people Good are point. seeing more of the world today in a more open way than anyone would have thought possible. And this is happening in Egypt. It's happening in Tunisia. Uh, it is truly a remarkable step. And I think that the Trump administration can feel very good that they've had the relationship growing here uh, far beyond what anybody in the American media thought possible. Uh, this is the guy, remember, who doesn't know anything about foreign affairs, and he's an isolationist. I mean, this is an extraordinary demonstration of American leadership and, hopefully, genuine partnership with the Middle East. We've been blessed by We have so many great people here on the show this morning. Dr. Con uh, Konta Ahmed is here uh, as well, watching this amazing scene unfold. Doctor, you have a point to make about this, this amazing scene. Yeah, it's just that momentary still image where we see the President of the United States, next to him the King of Saudi Arabia, next to him King Abdullah of Jordan, and next to him President al-Sisi of Egypt. That is the center kingpin of Sunni power. They're going to influence the rest of the region. It's phenomenal. And while many things have been said, wonderful counterterrorism center in Saudi Arabia, two things that have changed. There is an enormous swell of political will in the Muslim world, which just was beaten down in the last eight years. That is new. And also, it's not just Sunni armies and uh, partnerships with uh, these countries, but it's actually going to be the foundational principles of Islam, which all of these leaders can bring to bear in many, many ways. Uh, I'm sure that the Saudi Arabian Center to Counterterrorism is going to take a feather out of the cap of Al Azhar's center, which has been doing that. And they know, like we do here in the United States, countering extremism sure. is not just armies alone. It's it's also speech, the digital space, forensic digital e examinations, silencing the jihadists in this in the virtual space. All of that is happening. Well, but that lineup of those world leaders that tells you who's absolutely in it, shoulder to shoulder with the United States. Absolutely, you see it, you, and you see it as part of a wave no, of the turn in the approach of this country. And what you're watching right now on the screen are the attendees for this speech are being moved into the the room where the speech will be given as the photo, the family photo, as you said, Abby, uh, is finished up, and they get that taken. Care of. Michael Prejean, I want to go to you briefly because a big part of, of that region is perception of strength. And you've spent a lot of time uh, in, in that region. You understand the dynamic between Iran and, and the Sunni Muslim countries. Uh, to, to, to choose, as you said, King Abdullah and King Al and, and uh, General Al Sisi, um, not necessarily small D Democrats uh, uh, with an authoritarian stretch, but they're looking to squash mm -hmm. Islamism uh, as it radical Islam as it pertains to their borders. How important is this shift and its perception in the Middle East? Well, the, stri the strongest tribe concept, you're, you're watching it. And I agree uh, to have the president there with, with King Abdullah, the king, of, the king of, of, of Saudi Arabia, and with also al-Sisi sends a very strong message. I just want to say one thing about General Mattis. Uh, General Mattis got Trump to change his mind on waterboarding. We shouldn't be surprised if he gets, his mi gets Trump to change his mind on what we should do in the Middle East. Trump will defer to experts. Mattis is one of those, and McMaster is, is one of those. And that should be comforting to a lot of Trump critics. Yeah, so they are now in the, in the speaker's room, as Pete was saying. Once everyone is seated, then the, the king of Saudi Arabia, Salman, will introduce the president, and then the president will, of course, give that speech that we are have been awaiting for some time. Uh, speaker, I want to bring you uh, back in this. You, you think about the significance of this moment, and I, I'm thinking back of on President Trump very early on in the campaign trail, I mean, this was one of the first issues that he cared about, that he talked about, was was terrorism, was the safety, the national security of this nation. Here he is as president of the United States over there on his first international trip in Saudi Arabia. I mean, what do you make of this moment? Well, I think this is comparable to President Reagan going to London for his famous Westminster speech where he outlined the cause of liberty and democracy and set the stage for the defeat of the Soviet Empire. This is a very similar moment. You have the President of the United States surrounded by the largest alliance we've ever seen in the Muslim world, talking and articulating about a, a practical, realistic idealism that is going to move forward together.